What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko back with Tony finally. Tony, we missed you on the channel. Hello. And it's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. But today you're showing off a uh, a different build of Albaz. We're showing off Albaz. All right. I'm so going to take over. So let me explain something intriguing. Uh, this is the part where I geek out about how much I look into just lore on for cards. Albaz is what you generally see from the Albaz structure. There are a bunch of cards that list fusion monsters that, or cards that list Fallout of Albaz in it. Inversely, the stuff that you're probably seeing a lot being played right now is called the branded stuff. This is stuff, for example, like branded fusion, because they primarily support the idea of level 8 fusions. And a lot of the cards, because Fallen Albaz lore-wise belongs to the branded group, also means that they support them and are mentioning them. As a result, they are kind of hand-to-hand, -hand, but as at the same time, there are some unique things you could do just playing Fallen of Albaz cards. So is this more of a pure Albaz deck? Pretty much, you could say that. All right, let's get into it. If that explanation was confusing, it is. Uh, I probably thought of it better in my head, and I probably will say it better on my channel. So check it out there for what, what that actually means. Yeah, you guys are getting more in-depth on his channel. All right. All right. So starting off, we have two Fallen Valbaz. Uh, Fallen Valbaz on summon discards a card, fusion summons using monsters from either side of the field, but you can only use itself as the monster on your side of the field. Okay. Anything else has to be from your opponent's side. Yep. This is a super poly. That's really cool. But in most cases, that will never come up. Okay. On the off chance it does, it does out a field, but in most cases, the reason why we're playing him is because he's a fusion requirement in almost every one of our fusion monsters, yeah. as this is a Fallen of Albaz deck. Yep. As a result, he is also kind of a brick in a lot of situations, but that's fine. We have a lot of ways to get him back in the deck or extend him to the graveyard if we do open him. Okay. But we do need at least two for the fact that if we don't have at least a second copy sometimes, we might not be able to access our fusions. Okay. Yeah. But uh, with that being said, let's talk about the fusions a little bit because it does actually bring a little bit of a context. Okay. So there's a few fusions, each of them coming out in each of the sets since Rise of Duelist. We have Titan Clad, the Ashen Dragon. We have a Brigand, the Glory Dragon. We have Sprint, the Iron Dash Dragon. We have Albion, the Branded Dragon. We have Lubelion, the Black Flame Dragon, Shrouded Dragon, a Searing Flame Dragon. There we go. And Mir Jade, the Ice Blade Dragon. The newest one. Yes. These are all fusions that require Fallen of Albaz as one of its materials, alongside another generic requirement. For example, Titanclad only needs a monster with 2,500 more attack. Uh, Brigand only needs a monster that's level 8 or higher. Uh, Spring requires any monster that was just special summon this turn. Uh, these require light and dark monsters, and this requires any fusion, synchro, exceeds, or link monster. So, yeah. any extract monster. Uh, because of their generic fusion requirements, it means that if you are actually activating Fallen Valbaz's effect, you pretty much can fuse any viable boss monster on your opponent's side of the field to get there. But each of them are also pretty good for a number of reasons. They all have decent effects. For example, Titanclad just gets big relative to the monsters that you make with it, and is gains card immunity for just the turn cycle that he summoned, so you can just beat down with him. Yep. Brigand, your opponent can only use monster effects to target it, yep. none of your other monsters. Sprint can shift columns to destroy all cards in the original column, so he's just removal. Uh, these facilitate additional fusion summons by uh, this one discarding a card, but this one just activating itself by either banishing materials from your field, hand, or graveyard, or shuffling back materials from your field, hand, uh, graveyard, or banished. Yep. And as a result of that, these cards essentially let you perform additional fusion summons. Well, Mirror Jade is your only form of disruption because it allows you to send any of these other fusions to the, from your extract to the graveyard to non-targeting banish a monster. Yeah, it's kind of insane. Yes. Uh, this also facilitates the last part of these monsters. They all have graveyard effects that trigger on the end phase that they're sent to the graveyard in any way. Yep. Uh, to search for a Fallen Valbass or respective card from an archetype that you may have seen. Yep. Uh, Titan Clash searches for a Dogmatica monster uh, and Fallen Valbass. Brigand searches for Fallen Valbass and a Tri Brigade. This one searches for Springins. This one searches for or a branded this one's unique because it doesn't search for anything and mere jade if it's sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card triggers its effect and then on the end phase nukes your opponent's board yep these are all really good effects but the fact is these four specifically will be the ones you want to send with your mere jade to get end phase searches yep this is especially relevant because now with the fallen of albaz structure deck we actually get cards that directly support fallen of albaz that also belong to these archetypes yep meaning that these cards now search proactively more support yep so, what support are we talking about? Well, uh, we do have to start off with two Albion, the Shroud of Dragon. This is the only one that technically can't be searched per se, but it is one of the better ones. First off, while in the field or graveyard, he counts as Fallen of Albaz, which means in the pinch, he is a Fallen of Albaz if you need to make something with it. Yep. More importantly though, while in the hand or graveyard, you can send a Branded Spell or Trap or Fallen of Albaz from your deck or hand to the graveyard, 
And then depending on where you send it from, do one of two things. If you send from the hand, you special on this card. Yep. So from the graveyard, you could just pitch one from hand, special on this. He's a 2,500 level eight beater. Uh, if you send from the deck, however, Brand, uh, Albion puts itself to the bottom of the deck. And if you send from that, if you activate this effect wall in the hand, you then draw a card. Yep. So this is either the freeze foolish bear for any fall on Valbass or branded spell of trap, or this is a special summon. Yep. Which is fantastic. Uh, specifically for the fact that he's also a level eight monster with 2,500 attack, which means he can make your, uh, he can make Brigand and he can make Titan clad just using those requirements alone. And that puts him in the graveyard to then put any of the branded spell and traps into the graveyard, which has some uses. Uh, going on from there, however, we then have the new stuff starting with three Tri Brigade kits. Or no, Spriggan's kit. Yeah. So he is a Spriggan's monster. Uh, kit, special summons yourself from the hand if you control or have in your graveyard a fusion monster listing Fallen of Abbas. And we have a few ways to set that up. So he's essentially also an extender. Yep. More importantly, when she's summoned, you can search for a branded spell or trap and then tuck one card to the bottom of the deck. Yep. This searches for all your branded support. It also lets you uh, tuck back in something like a Fallen of Albaz so that you don't have to see it again if you do see it. Yep. Uh, and that is pretty much it. It's just a searcher for your branded spell and drops. But then we have two cards, which is your Tri Brigade Mel Courier. This card's insane. This card's cool. Uh, while in the hand or on the face up on the field, if you control a Fallen of Albaz fusion and your opponent activates a monster effect, this card can send itself to the graveyard to negate that effect. This is essentially a hand trap. Yep. Pretty decent. Also, if it would be banished by anything, it searches for a monster that lists Fallen of Albaz. As in this one, this one, yeah. or I think technically Fallen of Albaz itself because she also he also listed in Owen's condition. Yeah, I believe so. So that essentially, especially when combined with a card like your uh, Albion, which banishes from the grave, lets you essentially also create an additional advantage that way as well. Uh, also, as a result of the fact that he's a tri he can be searched by your Brigand, which is specifically interesting because Brigand is a beast. And we'll talk about that a little later. Okay. From there, we then have the one uh, Cle incredible Ecclesia, the Virtuous. Uh, she, uh, as a quick effect, can sack herself to summon out an Albaz from your deck. Um, this technically can flash an Albaz on your opponent's turn. Yep. Uh, but most cases, there's two real relevant effects. First off, she special summons herself if your opponent controls my monster. She's another yep. extender if you want him make some link plays with him. Yep. Uh, at the same time, she also can add herself back from the graveyard on the turn that a fusion monster was sent to the graveyard. Yep. Meaning that if you do something like activate Mirror Jade's effect and to send a fusion monster, she gets herself back for infinite fodder. And that's pretty decent because she's also light, meaning that she can be used for some of your fusions and dump from the deck with a card that we'll talk about later. Yep. Uh, then, as you probably expect, most builds are playing it, and we still are also playing. We're playing the three Aluber and the two Despian Tragedy. Aluber is essentially a kit. It searches for a branded spell or trap, but it doesn't need to talk back a card, so it's a little better. And it can be searched by your Destiny Tragedy, which searches for any Destiny card when it's sent to the graveyard or banished by a card effect, which, if you're fusing with it, will trigger that effect. Yeah. Uh, this is just another way to get into all your branded spell or traps to start the game. But as I mentioned before, because Kit can special summon herself to the field, opening both is actually pretty beneficial because you there is ways to trigger both on the turn yeah, to sure. get two spells or traps. So that's that. Uh, also, at the same time, I do want to mention this. Uh, there are two unique effects that people seem to forget. A Luber can bring itself back when one of your level 8 or higher fusions dies. Oh, which is really useful because it does put up a body to save you from dying. But Despian Tragedy also can banish itself from the graveyard to add back a branded spell of trap. Or set a branded spell of trap. Can you back the fusion with that? You can set the fusion again. Nice. It's something that people forget because a lot of times they've already banished it from the graveyard by the time they get to do that. Yeah. But in pinch situations, this just puts you back in the game once you get branded fusions to the graveyard. Uh, from there, we have the one Fairy Tail Snow because we're playing cards that let you fuse directly from the deck. You can send this, and this, once you have enough resources in the graveyard, can summon itself back for additional uh, res uh, additional disruption. Uh, let's not forget, if she banishes your Tribe again, Mel Courier, it will search. Yeah. So that's just decent synergy right there. Uh, then we have, for our hand traps, we have three Veiler. It's a light also, so you can make Albion. Just the best hand and traps in this format. Uh, yeah. Theoretically, you can play things like uh any of their hand traps bow spell works uh joel lockbird works this deck is pretty flexible with his hand traps okay so you're just playing the six hand traps you're playing just the six hand traps okay. uh we're I'm, at this point space is pretty tight especially when you're running all this extra stuff unfortunately. okay uh then we have three branded fusion of uh, course pretty much everyone knows what this does this just makes any uh fallen of Albas fusion using materials from your hand field or deck yep this is the freest fusion you will ever get in this deck. And because you're fusing the deck, it lets you load up your graveyard with a bunch of different graveyard effects. Yep. For example, you can dump, uh, because once again, we're talking about Titan Clad or Brigand, you can send this to the graveyard and then load your graveyard up with any uh, branded spell or trap card. You can send something like your Snow to just 
have the effect for snow. You can send a Destiny and Tragedy to search for your Aluber, or you can send an Incredible Cohesion to add it back to your graveyard. Yep. Uh, a lot of cool plays you could do with this card. Uh, and once again, because of all the stuff like you're playing like Aluber and Kit, you can search into it. Yep. From there, we're then playing two Branded in White. Branded in White is like a Miracle Fusion for this deck. Let's yep. you fuse in using, some, using your hand or field. However, if you would use Fallen of Albaz as one of those materials, you can also fuse from your graveyard as well. You, including if the Fallen of Albaz is in the graveyard. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, it's a Miracle Fusion. It's a great card to follow up one of your Branded Fusions with to make a second fusion if you need one. And it also has the benefit where if it's sent to the graveyard by the effect of a Fallen of Albaz as cost, it sets itself on the end phase. Uh, it means that technically it makes your Fallen of Albaz kind of free, but it also means that if you send it for the cost of your own Albion, the Shroud of Dragon, while it's in the graveyard, It'll come back. shooting itself as Fallen of Albaz, it comes back as well. So nice. it's a pseudo-searcher that way too. We have the one Brennan to Red for that Guardian Chimera play. You're pretty much adding back a Despia, or it's also targets the Fallen of Albaz, you, so you can add it back as well, and then making a fusion monster on your opponent's turn. It's a quick fusion, but because we're not playing the full Despia package like a lot of the other Despia builds are, uh, we can't make full use of this card, so we're not playing a multiple of them. Makes sense. Uh, la and then we have there uh, we have two branded in high spirits. So this card's really cool, and yep. this is one of the unique things with the deck. Branded high spirits says you reveal a monster in your hand. Then you send a fusion monster from a level eight fusion monster with twenty five hundred attack or defense from your X deck to the graveyard with the same type as that revealed monster. So any of your branded any ones. of your branded as long as they meet the same type requirement. Yep. Then you can send that reveal card to the graveyard to add any monster that lists fallen of Albaz in its text. So there's some really cool plays, but this essentially lets you modulate your hand. Obviously, at, uh, you can reveal anything and then send any fusion, which will get its graveyard effect. But you can then convert that into a different Fallen of Alba support as needed. Yep. And there's some really cool combos you could do with this card. Uh, for example, let's say we do have Albion on the Shroud of Dragon, right? After being branded in High Spirits, we can reveal the Albion on the Shroud of Dragon to send the normal Albion on to, uh, the Branded Dragon to the graveyard. Then we can send this card to the graveyard to add any of our other Fallen of Albaz support. Not only putting the Albion on the Branded Dragon's effect line, but also putting the Shroud of Dragon to the graveyard to activate its effect as well. Yep. Uh, alternatively, and this is the more favorite of mine, uh, as I mentioned before, Kit is a beast. Yep. Which means I can go activate Branded in High Spirits, revealing the Kit to send Brigand to the graveyard. Then I can just choose not to discard this card to add anything, or I can discard it just to add another one of itself. But because I've now put a fusion in the graveyard, this can special summon herself. Oh, true. And when she special summons herself, she does all those things. But let's say you end your turn with something like a Mirror Jade, right? On the end phase, your Tri Brigade Brigand will then trigger, you then add you your Melkorier yeah. to end with double disruption off of that field alone. Pretty decent, right? That's pretty strong, yeah. Uh, what's even better is that, like your Ecclesia, on the end phase that a fusion monster will be sent to the graveyard, this adds itself back from the graveyard to your hand. Oh. So this is continuous searching, which is going to become a theme in this deck. You're going to find a lot of situations where you're loading up a bunch of things that will trigger all in the end phase to make your hand go from one card to three cards to four cards very easily. Because all these cards trigger off your fusions being sent. Your fusion trigger off of being sent. And on the end phase, you just reap the benefits. Yep. And that's, this is why this card is great. Uh, unfortunately, we're playing two purely for the fact that not all the types work with this card. Uh, oh, okay. None of your Despias, because they're fairies, have anything you can send with this. And unfortunately, Incredible Ecclesia being a spellcaster, also nothing to send with it. There are awkward brick situations, so you don't want to play too many of this. Makes sense. Uh, what you do want to play more of, however, is probably your branded opening. Uh, this summons your Aluber. It's your e for It's your e for the deck. You yeah. do have the discard con on resolution, but in certain situations, that actually might be beneficial. It also, in the graveyard, protects some of your fusion from being destroyed by card effects by banishing it, so it's decent protection in the long term. Uh, from there, we also have two Branded Laws. This is another new one. So Branded Laws acts a lot like a Magical Meltdown, except in reverse. First off, like Magical Meltdown, you can't, uh, you can't activate or negate the activation or effect of a card that fusion summons. This... Is ruled like Magical Meltdown, which means that your opponent can not stop the activation, they can still stop the effect. So yep. when you activate Brand of Fusion and your opponent ashes, well, that still works. Yep. But it means that essentially your opponent can go Omni to gate any of them. At the same time, once you summon a monster, once I like Magical Meltdown, when a Fusion monster is Fusion Summoned, your opponent cannot activate effects. And this works much more fantastically for this deck compared to a deck like Invoked, purely because a bunch of your Fallen of Albash fusions actually have on summon effects. Yep. Additionally, one of the effects that triggers on summon is Brandon Loss's other effect, where if you were to fusion summon, you can search for a monster that's fallen of Albaz as a, uh, in its text. Yep. So this not only searches for any of the fallen of Albaz support I've already listed, it then also just protects any of that from being stopped. Yep. 
fantastic card. And there's a few ways to do a lot of chain blocking shit, especially with this deck. So it's a great card. So uh, from there, we then have the one uh, Gold Sarcophagus and the one Foolish Burial. Now with two targets in this deck, we can send a Despian Tragedy to get its effect, or we can banish the Despian Tragedy or try a Mel Courier to search our so deck out. Effects, nice. Pretty good cards. It's pretty good, yeah. Uh, the one Call by the Grave, Hand Traps. Of course. The two Forbidden Droplets, because we're in this kind of format. Yep. And then for the traps, uh, we have two new traps from the Fallen of Abish deck. We have Branded Retribution and Branded Sword. Sword is what you send off of Albion usually, right? Yes. So both of these have effects. Uh, Branded Retribution, if your opponent would activate an effect that would, uh, any effect of a monster spell or trap card that would summon a monster, you can negate the activation by either bouncing back one of the Fallen of Albash regions you control or putting two from your graveyard back into your extra deck. Yep. This is a weird way to like also put back like recycle your fusions but essentially let you stop a mirror match where your opponent would activate a fusion spell as well yep uh branded sword on the other hand is a little weird uh by banishing all your branded spell and traps from your graveyard you summon that many ice blade tokens to your field they're all 2500 attack which means that theoretically you can just otk turn, with you this. can otk with this yeah. card but you'll probably never activate this effect in most cases you'll be activating the graveyard effects of these two cards uh while in the graveyard they banish themselves to add back a banished card either a branded spell or trap or a monster that lets fall out of albaz as a, uh in its text this gets my courier back this gets my courier back and this gets you pretty much any of the fallen of albaz spells. spells you may bench yeah uh which again works fantastically with a card like your uh snow, snow to just get back things that you need yep uh so both those cards can be sent off of albion to get their graveyard effects off that turn but this one actually widely enough can be used as a disruption on its own okay there's a lot of effects that just summon themselves so yeah and that pretty much fulfills the main, main deck. deck. Uh, we'll quickly cover the extra deck, even though I've kind of gone through most of them already as it is. You've gone through the important ones. Yeah, so in terms of the Mirror Jades, we are playing three Mirror Jades because you will access three Mirror Jades. I don't know where the third one is. There it is. Well, you are playing three Mirror Jade because yep. you will probably most likely access three Mirror Jade. Um, you cannot control more than one Mirror Jade. That yep. is one restriction on this card. So you can't make two. More importantly, if you activate the effect on that turn to banish a card, you can't use it on the following turn. Yep. So use this effect sparingly, but it is once per copy. So that if you somehow find a way to refresh this copy by summoning it back from the graveyard, it has its effect live again. Yep. Uh, in terms of Lubelion, we are playing two Lubelion, just because it recycles cards that you banish them. We are playing the two Albion, uh, less because you actually will use the Albion effect, more because probably you'll send one and then make one. Yep. Uh, we're playing two Brigand, because there are situations where Brigand... Actually, it's just the size of a wall. You can make this, and your opponent wouldn't be able to out your Mirror Jade at the same time. And he's a card that is kind of hard to destroy just because he can't be sure about Yep. Uh, we have the one Titan Clad, just sometimes end games, the one Sprint, we knew that. And then for the remaining ones, we have the one Dragos Tapelia, which we can make because all our spells that fusion some technically don't need to summon a branded of Albas fusion. Or oh, yeah. Or of Albas fusion. Uh, so you can theoretically fuse one of your fusions in the graveyard and like. A dark monster just to make dragons to me as an additional negate. Yep. We have the one guardian chimera just because you can brand it and read it. Or you could actually summon on your turn and just pop two. I mean, pop, depends if you pop two, draw two, whatever yeah. you want to uh, form it out. You have the one Verti Anaconda. For someone explained reason, branded fusion is a fusion card, which means it can be copied by this card. And there's enough ways, as you already seen with Kit and Incredible Cleese, you just put two monsters on the field. So you can so make something like this. Probably viable. And alternatively, if you have the pieces, you could just make proxy F and do the same thing. Yep. And that is pretty much your engine there. Uh, this is 14 cards. The trademark for this. Trademark there is a 15th the card, just not on the channel. Yeah, if you guys want to see the 15th card, make sure to check out Tony's channel. Tony, thank you for the deck profile. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to watch a more in-depth profile, make sure to go check out Tony's channel. Link will be in the description below. And I do have like the combo component there where you actually can see some of the gameplay for this deck. And I will be explaining some of the more interesting nuances for this deck as well. So... Check it out. All right. And with that, guys, I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe. And with that, Spanko and Tony signing out. Peace.